Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Keystone Pro Wallet. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. There's a tear away here on the side. Notice the tamper-proof laser tape here. All right, they give you a little coupon here for your next purchase or uh, to give to a friend. All right, here's the Keystone tablet. We can just take this part off. This is the pro version. We have some documentation here, which you should read carefully. We have some cards for recording our backup phrase. Uh, it also comes with a warranty card. So if you need to return your device, you can include this. The device requires uh, four AAA batteries. But I have the Pro version here, so uh, we also received a rechargeable battery that we can use. And a cable. So this is a USB-C cable. You can plug one end into a charger or a computer, and then the other end will go into the device. This is the rechargeable battery that you get with the Pro version. just fits on there like a, it has a magnet that holds it on. You'll have to just charge the battery separately. I'll go ahead and put the uh, USB-C cable in there. And there's a little light here that lets me know that it's charging up. Also note that the uh, Pro version has a fingerprint reader here for uh, biometric identification. So you don't have to type in a password every time. You can uh, use this fingerprint ID to access the wallet. All right, and then they give us a web address uh, for going to the uh, detailed instructions for setup. Okay, so they're indicating here that we're going to have to do the initial setup using a computer or a laptop. So I'm going to do this in my web browser. All right, so here we are. I'm at their uh, web page, home page. Most of these have to do with writing down the seed phrase. Remember, you are fully responsible for this. If you lose the seed phrase, then uh, you may not be able to restore your device. All right, so once we agree to these, we'll go ahead and click Next. So the instructions state that the light on the battery will start out being white and then will turn yellow when it is fully charged. Right now, mine is uh, still white. So I'll allow this to charge up for a little while before I start to set up the device. All right, while I'm charging this one up, I'll go ahead and use the batteries so that I can show you guys the setup. So it just fits on there uh, like a magnet, or it is a magnet. All right, and then they also mentioned that you should prepare a micro SD card, uh, which will be used for updating the firmware. All right, this is what a micro SD card looks like. It's pretty small. You may be used to something that's uh, about this size, right? But this is the micro SD card. So what I have here is actually an adapter that allows this one to go in. If you've got a big reader, then you could use an adapter like this. But I have an SD card reader with a slot for SD and micro SD. So basically, you can just put this one in here. Right, if you'll notice here, uh, you're going to need to format this FAT32. So in order to format FAT32, uh, you can just go here to Format. And, uh, and if it's set to anything like uh, NTFS or XFAT, you'll just want to make sure it's on FAT32 before you format it. Okay, so I've got that ready. All right, so the first instruction says to go ahead and uh, hold that power button down for about three seconds. And there you can see it's uh, starting up. So uh, the first screen, uh, we'll choose language. I'm going to keep it on English. We'll hit Next. All right, and then we'll just make sure that we're on the right page here. All right, so I'm going to take the Keystone 
and it wants me uh, to go ahead and scan that QR code. All right, so it's opened up the camera here. I'll just go over to uh, back to my uh, web browser. All right, and it gives me this code. Oh, it wants me to enter that code uh, down here. All right, and then I'll click verify. Here I entered that into the web page, and uh, we can see that the device is secure. All right, we'll hit done here. Now it wants us to set a password for the device. So we'll hit success here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, set a password. All right, you'll, you'll want to write it in twice, of course. All right, and once you've written it in twice, we'll hit uh, done. All right, and then they give us instructions on updating the firmware. And uh, this is what I was talking about earlier with that card. All right, I'm going to be using my device for more than just Bitcoin, so I'm going to download the Multicoin firmware. If you're just using Bitcoin, you can use the BTC-only firmware, which uh, lowers the attack surface, makes it harder to hack the wallet, but that would only be uh, for storing Bitcoin. So I'm going to be using mine for more than just Bitcoin. I'm going to download the Multicoin firmware. All right, and then I can just drop it uh, on that uh, flashcard that I just formatted. Right? And I will want to go ahead and open that up. Yeah, when you open up this notice here, it lets you know that the update zip file should not be unzipped and it should be at the root level of the card. Uh, we've got our FAT32 formatting already done. So uh, all we need to do is just drop this at the root level here. I can do that like this. And that's it, right? I don't even need these other two, but I can just leave them on there. So this is the file that we'll be using to update the device. They also give you the option of checking the 256 SHA sum. All right, so if we go over to the website, you can scroll down a bit here. For the multi-coin coin firmware, uh, here's the checksum, right? Copy that into your clipboard. Uh, I've got some uh, SHA sum checking software here. Basically, I'm just going to browse over to that uh, flash drive. And hit that update zip. All right, there's the SHA. And then I'll paste in the one from their official website. And it's a match, right? So that's one way to do it. Uh, th the other way, if you don't have SHA sum checking software, is uh, when you insert it into the device, the device is going to show you that long number and you can eyeball it if you want to do that. But uh, I prefer this method. It was a little easier, right? right? You can leave this up like this and then eyeball it, but uh, I prefer my method a little quicker. All right, so now that I have uh, prepared this device here, It's got the uh, file on it and it's ready to go. So I'll hit update now. It looks like the slot is over here. You'll wanna push that in until you, it clicks. All right, and then we'll hit update now. All right, so it detected the device and the firmware and there's that uh, Shawsum Right, you can eyeball that if you want. Right, if you want to go, if you want to try to uh, go back and forth and just eyeball that really long SHA 256 and compare it to this one on their website, you're welcome to do it that way too. Uh, we already did that, so I'm ready to go. I'll go ahead and hit update now. Uh, it wants my password, the one that I just created. All right, we'll just confirm that. 
All right, you can see it's updating. All right, looks like it finished up there. I need to re-enter my password. All right. All right, so here we go. We're at the uh, create wallet step. Let's take a look at the instructions here. All right, we finished the firmware update. Let's hit next. All right, so if we already had an existing seed phrase from previous uh, Keystone device and you were restoring, you would choose the import wallet at this point. We're setting this one up as brand new. So I'll hit create wallet. All right, so I'll hit create wallet here. It needs me to enter my password once again. I believe once we get through the initial setup, we'll be able to enable the fingerprint uh, so that we won't have to keep typing in this password whenever it's required. But uh, during the setup, we'll just have we'll have to be patient and type in our password. Okay, now in today's example, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to be writing it down on a piece of paper. If you want, you can also uh, purchase one of their tablets, which is uh, made of metal. It has uh, metal letters that you can use to uh, record your backup phrase. And uh, this device would be uh, waterproof and fireproof and fade proof. But I'm just gonna stick to writing the recovery phrase down on the provided card today. Just kind of keep it simple. Notice down at the bottom, they have the option of creating a Shamir backup. Uh, they have some instructions here that uh, walk you through it, but basically uh, you set up a number of shares. So you could share it between two people or more, and then each person would have a fragment of the backup phrase uh, for security. We'll keep it simple and just use a singular backup phrase. All right, so I'll go ahead and tap create with a single backup. And of course it gives me the warning to uh, check my surroundings make sure no one else can see me doing this. All right, and there's the words. I'll go ahead and write them down. Also want to note that the card uh, number, the uh, numbering is important. Uh, these words are in order, so each word has a number next to it, and there's a number on the card too. So make sure that you uh, write word number two in the word number two slot but they kind of make it easy because the grid of the sheet matches the grid of the uh, backup phrase. All right, once you've got the words written down, you'll take this card and put it in a safe place. And then uh, we'll tap the button that says recovery phrase saved. Once again, they're gonna remind us that that recovery phrase will be the only way to recover this wallet if anything happens to the device, right? A lot of people ask me that. Well, what happens if the device breaks? That's what the recovery phrase is for. You can restore to a different device if the device breaks or is lost or stolen. So I'll uh, tap this button for next step. All right, now they want us to re-enter the recovery phrase into the device to confirm that we've got all of the words written down correctly. So you'll just refer to your sheet. You can just put your sheet down there and uh, type in all of these words. You'll notice after typing in a couple of letters that it'll start offering you completed choices. and uh, Or you can just type in the first four letters and it'll uh, enter the word for you. Yeah, in this case here, I see my word already. I can just tap it. Once you've got all the words typed in, you can just hit confirm here and it's going to create the wallet for you. All right, let's uh, scroll through the instructions here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, choose my companion app. I'll leave it at the default. I would like to use MetaMask with this wallet, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to add another companion app later. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Keystone compatible app uh, so that uh, for the most basic use. We'll hit confirm here. All right, we'll hit finished here. All right, I'm gonna go up here to the uh, 
up the hamburger menu up here and uh, get into the settings app and I would like to uh, set up the fingerprint so I'll choose this option here all right so uh, we'll put um, I'll put my finger on the back there and I'll go ahead and hit this all right I'll just keep tapping it until I hear I feel a vibration and then I'll remove it All right, I'll just keep pressing it and there we go all right and I'm going to use uh, all of these with the fingerprint so that I won't have to keep typing in that password every time uh, I want to make a transaction or enter the get the wallet unlocked right all right so we can back out now okay yeah and in the settings you can go uh, and uh, use the alternate wallets so we could toggle back and forth between them so if we wanted to use MetaMask we could just do this and then confirm All right and then we can sync this up with our MetaMask wallet and if we wanted to use the companion app then we can go back here software and just switch back All right. And there we go. Now I can also enable these other coins if I want to. Right, and I can store all of these coins in here. Um, I can also disable coins if I want to, if I don't want to use these uh, older Bitcoin uh, formats, I can just use the native SegWit. And there you go. Now you can see I've got these wallets enabled. All right, and it takes me back here. I can go over here to the supported wallets, uh, and I'm going to get that Keystone Companion app. Uh, and I'm using an uh, iPhone. So in order to make sure I get the right one, I'll go ahead and uh, use that QR code and open up my phone. I'll go ahead and get that QR code ready and then open up my camera. We'll go ahead and open that up. So it takes me to the official app. I want to make sure I'm getting the correct app. All right, I'll just hit download from the App Store. And that takes me to the Keystone app. I can hit uh, Get. I can just uh, double click here. And there's the companion app. The device went to sleep, so I can open it up with my fingerprint now. Okay, I'll choose bind. So the instructions here are to tap these three. We'll connect our software wallet. And we'll hit confirm here. Let it access the camera. All right, and then we're going to scan our device with our phone. And there we've got it. So it's uh, telling me that there are some new features supported with the latest firmware, which we've done. We updated the firmware. All right, so we've got the companion app uh, synced up to our device. And uh, we can use the companion app as our interface. It will allow us to deposit and withdraw crypto. All right, I'm going to go to system settings here. Uh, the screen timeout is pretty short. It only lasts 30 seconds, and then you have to re-enter your password. I'm going to put it at 10 minutes, make it a little uh, more convenient. Uh, just make sure you have physical uh, security when you're using the device. Uh, but I'd rather have it stay on for 10 minutes rather than shut down after 30 seconds. All right, so uh, we've got the app and the device synced up. Uh, I'm going to do a demo on making some deposits and withdrawals. Okay, so before I do a demo on how to deposit and withdraw crypto into this wallet, my battery is fully charged now. Uh, the light is now orange, so I'm ready to 
use the uh, charged battery pack. So I'll just remove the uh, AAAs. You can't really use it while it's charging because the connector is on the inside of the battery. So we're going to have to take the connector off. Then we can drop this guy on there. And there we go. All right, so I'll go ahead and turn it on. All right, and as you recall, I set up the fingerprint ID, so all I have to do is uh, press my finger on the back here, and it wakes it up. All right, and so uh, I've got all these uh, cryptocurrency wallets set up, I would, and they're all empty. So the first thing I want to do is put some crypto into the wallet. So this part is the private key. We do all our interacting in the app. So I'll uh, tap on the app, and uh, there we have the controls for deposits and withdrawals. So I'll do a receive, and then we'll hit confirm. Now notice here that there are two formats that the address is presented in. The first is a QR code, and the second is the long form of the address. And they also want us to verify that address. So we can do that on the device by uh, tapping here. Right, and we'll tap here. So now we can see the long form of the address written out and we can just verify that it does match, right? This is a verification of the address. Now the fact that we can see the QR code on the device is helpful since uh, I would like to make a deposit into this address. So the easiest thing for me to do See, I could copy the address into my clipboard, and then I want to buy some Bitcoin and make a deposit into my wallet. So I will go to uh, an exchange. So there are lots of different exchanges that you can use from your phone to acquire Bitcoin. Uh, the best ones for people in the U.S. would be Binance U.S. or Coinbase or maybe even Kraken Pro. Coinbase Pro is being phased out. I think it might still work, but you're better off just using Coinbase. All right, I'm going to choose Coinbase today. Now, I already have some Bitcoin in my Coinbase account. If you uh, don't have any Bitcoin in your Coinbase account, it's pretty easy. Just go over here to buy, choose Bitcoin, and you can make yourself a one-time purchase. $100 or however much you want to purchase. Now, uh, down here, you can see that I have a payment option already set up. I've got several, actually. I've got a couple of bank accounts linked, and I have my uh, debit card linked, and I can also use Apple Pay to make this purchase. If you haven't set any of this up in your Coinbase app yet, then you'll need to take care of that, right? That falls under uh, the Coinbase rules. So Coinbase is a reputable exchange, US-based, and I have no problem linking my bank accounts or debit cards to my Coinbase account. Now, if I do make a one-time purchase, you'll notice that there's a bit of a merchant charge on there. So there are other ways to do this. You could use their trade interface. If you want to go over to the trade interface, you could make a, a Bitcoin trade if you have available cash in your account. Uh, that's a little more advanced. But suffice it to say that uh, once you get some Bitcoin in your Coinbase account, then you have the option of withdrawing it to your own wallet. So if, if we go back over here to home, you'll see that there's a send option. I can tap that. And it wants me to choose the asset that I would like to send. I'll choose Bitcoin. Now, I could just paste in that address that I got from the Keystone. Like if I allow the paste. See, there's the uh, address that I uh, copied from the Keystone app. All right. Or I could do it this way. I could just go into my Coinbase account and tap that little QR code reader there. And then just hold the phone over the hardware tablet and just read it in that way, which is a more secure way of doing it, less room for error. You're basically reading the receiving address directly off the device. All right, we'll hit continue here. So I can uh, adjust my amount based on the uh, dollar value or BTC value, right? I can switch it here. 
So I could put in a BTC value, or I could just put in, say, $50. And then that'll calculate the amount of Bitcoin. All right, so we'll use 50. All right, there will be a withdrawal charge. There's always going to be fees when you move crypto around. You just need to get used to that. It's built into the Bitcoin network, and exchanges have their own fee structures. So you're always going to incur fees. I prefer to use reputable exchanges like Coinbase or Binance US or Kraken, but if you can find some uh, exchange that has cheaper fees, more power to you. I'm just going to stick with a trusted platform. That's worth it to me. So we'll hit send now. I'm going to need my two-factor authentication. I'll just go over here to Google Authenticator. I'll tap that code for Coinbase. I'll slide back over and just paste it in there. All right, and there we go. It got sent. So it's going to take a few minutes for that to uh, get to my wallet. We can look at it in the uh, Keystone app and wait for it to show up here. All right, you can see there that uh, from the app that I have received this Bitcoin. And it does take a little while for it to confirm on the blockchain. So this does not mean that you don't have it yet. It just means that you can't spend it yet. So as long as you see it coming in, you'll know that it's safe and secure in your wallet. All right. And uh, once it confirms, you'll be able to uh, freely uh, send it back out again if you choose to do so. We can also do the same thing with Ethereum. If I tap on the Ethereum wallet and hit receive, it's going to present an Ethereum address for me. I can confirm this over on the device as well by tapping here and just make sure that these uh, Ethereum addresses match, All right? And I can do the same thing. I can go over to an exchange and make a purchase. And uh, just to mix it up, I'll do Binance US. I have some Binance US dollar in my account. I can use that to make a trade, or I can hit that big yellow button in the center down at the bottom and uh, just use uh, the buy crypto function which will uh, allow me to just make a purchase directly out of my bank account. Notice the fees over on Binance US are a bit cheaper for a $50 purchase. All right, and you can see there that the Ethereum has shown up in my account. So now I have a balance of Ethereum. You can get to your Ethereum balance by going down to the wallet over in the right corner, and you can see what's in your wallet. Uh, you can tap right on the asset and choose withdraw, or you can choose withdraw from the wallet home screen. And then after you've done that, you choose your asset. All right, I want to make a withdraw of the Ethereum. And notice they also have the QR code here. Now, I am on the Ethereum network. There are multiple networks that you can use in Binance US. I'm choosing the Ethereum network up here, ERC20. And uh, if I want to use this QR code, I can just tap right on there and then uh, scan the QR code of the device to get that Ethereum address. We'll hit Next. All right, I'll go ahead and send all of the Ethereum that I just bought. We'll preview that. Uh, there is a small withdrawal fee on the Ethereum network that they're going to charge me. And now I need my two-factor from my Google Authenticator. I'll just tap that code, come back over here, and paste it in. All right, they're going to send me an email to confirm that. So I'll run over to my Gmail. There's that confirmation. I'll hit Confirm Withdrawal. All right, my withdrawal has uh, been submitted. And now you can see there's a pending Ethereum withdrawal. All right, let's go back over to the uh, Keystone app. We can wait here. Notice that we have access to the receiving address over on the uh, device itself, but we don't have any uh, balance or transaction history. Remember that the device is more for secure deposits and withdrawals. You manage the crypto from the app. 
All right, you can see on the uh, in the ETH interface on the Ethereum wallet in the app that the uh, Ethereum has come in. Notice it's not showing up in the uh, available balance, right? It'll be available once it confirms on the blockchain. So if we look at the top level, you can see that uh, everything appears to be zero. But if I tap, I can see the incoming transactions and confirm that they are, in fact, in the wallet. As I mentioned before, it doesn't mean that you don't have it yet. It just means that it's not spendable yet. It's not an available balance. All right, so you can see now that the Bitcoin has fully arrived. Uh, it's been confirmed. So it's now spendable. So I want to give a demo on how you would send your Bitcoin back to an exchange. So I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, withdraw the, the Bitcoin from your wallet. So the device has timed out. I'll go ahead and turn it back on again. I'll put my finger on the back there to unlock it. There we go. Now we're going to need this device uh, to send Bitcoin out because uh, this is where the private key lives. This is the security of the device. So uh, this is the important part. So uh, what I wanna do is send my Bitcoin over to an exchange. So I'm going to need to get a deposit address in order to make my deposit. I need to move, if I'm gonna move my Bitcoin out of the wallet, I need to move it somewhere, right? And I need an address. So I'm going to go back over to Coinbase. I'm not going to buy anything. What I'm going to do is say I want to uh, deposit something, right? And uh, Coinbase's term for it is receive. As you can see, there's the receive down there. Receive means I want to receive something into my account. Now notice you can choose a lot of different cryptocurrencies here to receive, but uh, Bitcoin is first. So there it is, there's the Bitcoin address in my Coinbase account. I'm logged into my Coinbase account. This is the address that I would send Bitcoin to if I wanted to make a deposit into my Coinbase account. So uh, in order to do this, I want to make a withdrawal from my own wallet. So I'm going to tap on the Bitcoin account. I'm going to tap send down here. And then I need to put in the receiving address. I can look over here. There's a little icon. I believe that's the paste. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to allow that paste. And that's the address I got from my Coinbase account, right? I can look over here and kind of eyeball it and see it's the same address, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and send the max Bitcoin that's in my wallet. You can send as much or as little as you want, but if you're just getting started, always do small test transactions before sending really large sums, all right? Notice there is a 36 cent worth of Bitcoin fee there. That's Bitcoin blockchain fees. The Bitcoin blockchain works by charging fees for transactions. That's how Bitcoin works. So there's no way to avoid that, right? So we're going to hit send. There's an overview of our transaction. We'll hit confirm. And now we're going to need to sign this with our device. This is basically a transfer request. We need to send the request to the device. So I'm going to lay down my phone here. All right, what I need to do is tap up here at the top where they have the scan icon. I'm going to tap that and then I'll hold it over my phone, scan it in, and there. So uh, basically what happened there was I scanned in the transfer request. Now you can see the overview of what I'm trying to do is on the secure device, right? And all I need to do to authorize this outgoing transaction is to tap this button that says sign. So if I do that, it's gonna ask me for my fingerprint to verify. And then it's gonna give me a QR code. All right, we'll go back to the app at the top level and you can see I have the same kind of 
icon there at the top. So if I tap that icon, then it opens up the camera on my phone. I'm gonna use put my phone on top of this QR code. All right, and there we go. So basically the secure device has just authorized the outgoing transaction. Now that it's been authorized, I can complete it by tapping where it says broadcast down at the bottom. So when I tap broadcast, I'm going to send that transaction out. All right, so just a quick overview of what just happened. The uh, Keystone device holds the private keys. So I cannot send Bitcoin out from the phone app without having the secure device authorize the transaction. And so there, it's an air-gapped solution. So what happens is I generate a request on the phone app. I scan that request with my secure device. Once the request has been scanned in, I have the option of signing the transaction using my device. Once the transaction is signed, the device generates a new code. The new code is the signed transaction, past tense, signed, right? So when I'm scanning these QR codes, it's never the private key that's being scanned. I have no problem showing you that QR code on my device because it was simply the signed outgoing transaction. It was not revealing my private keys or anything, right? The private keys stay on the device and they're only used to sign outgoing transactions. If I tap on the wallet, you can see there that now there, uh, there was the incoming transaction and now the outgoing transaction. Okay, so you can see, and uh, I just received an email confirming that the Coinbase account has received the Bitcoin. So we can go over to the Coinbase account. Uh, we can look in my Bitcoin wallet here. And it shows that I just received some Bitcoin into my Coinbase account. Now, I can do the same thing with my Ethereum. You can see the Ethereum has now uh, fully confirmed it's available in my account to send out. Now, I could send it over to Coinbase or I could send it over to Binance US. I could send it to somebody else. I could send it to a different wallet. It doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, is that crypto can be transferred if you uh, know how to do it, right? So, uh, but if I want to withdraw this Ethereum, I need to send it somewhere. I need to get an address. So let's see. We can go ahead and uh, send it back to Binance US if we want to. And so in this case, what we'll want to do is uh, hit deposit. And then we'll choose Ethereum. We can search for it up here. We want to make a deposit of Ethereum. We're going to be doing it on the ERC-20 network, which is the default. You see, it's the. Uh, I can just leave it there. Uh, basically, what I want to do is uh, deposit to this address. So in this case, I can't really scan this QR code because uh, I'm using my own phone. So what I'll need to do is copy it into the clipboard. I can just tap down there and then just uh, flip over to the Keystone app and choose send. And now I can paste that address in. There we go, I can hit that icon and just paste in that address. That is the address of my Binance US account, right? You can see that there. I'll go ahead and send it all like we did with the Bitcoin. Uh, the device has gone to sleep. So I just have to wake it up by clicking the button and holding my finger on the back there. All right, so uh, we'll hit send on the app. We'll confirm what we're doing. And then it 
I need to scan this QR code with the device, right, in order to get the request into the device. So I'll tap the uh, scanning code. I'll just lift it up there, scan it in. And then I've got this button here that says sign. This is signing the transaction. I'll verify that with my finger. Now I have the signed transaction code, right? Remember, this is not the private key. I'm not revealing the private key of the wallet by showing you this code. This is just that single outgoing transaction from me to my uh, Binance US account, All right? So I'll go ahead and get out of this part. I'll go back to the main screen where I have this scan code and the top right corner, I'll just tap that, open up the uh, camera on the phone. I'll scan in, scan in the code using my phone. And now I've got broadcast available down at the bottom. I hit broadcast and confirm and off it goes, All right? Notice that my balance still has both amounts, but uh, as soon as both of these transactions confirm on the blockchain, uh, that balance will go back down to zero again, All right? We can uh, go into the ETH wallet, see that I have an outgoing transaction I can just take this back to the home screen. I'm done with secure device. I don't need to leave this thing on. Once the transaction goes out onto the blockchain, the device can be safely shut down. All right, and you can see now that the Ethereum has become a part of my available balance. Keystone Wallet is a great way to store your crypto safely and securely with its air-gapped solution for verifying transactions. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.